This video is the final video on the replication of DNA section of the Unit 1 human cells and this video is about PCR. So PCR is based around DNA replication so if you don't understand the process of that you really need to go back to the previous video about replication of DNA which I posted earlier um, and familiarise yourself with that because without knowing the, the key details of this this will not make sense to you because it is more complex because it includes temperatures. So PCR is used to amplify DNA and that means to make copies of. So we use this um, to identify people for um, paternity suits or to identify criminals, for example, from DNA samples left at the scene of a crime. So originally we are um, given a sample of parental DNA, so basically the, the original sample of DNA. So this is a very simple diagram of DNA, um, not as shown as a double helix, just shown as a straight strand at the moment. Okay, now the first stage in PCR is that that molecule of DNA must be separated. Now it's separated using a process um, that includes different temperatures. So this first way to separate it will then involve heating it. Okay, and that heating will involve heating to 92 to 98 degrees Celsius. The, that then allows the strands to separate. Okay, so as with normal DNA replication, the strands have to separate, and that's due to the hydrogen bonds between the bases breaking. So then for the next stage to allow that DNA to be replicated, as with DNA replication, you must have a primer. So to allow the primers to bond, this whole mixture must be cooled. Okay, so we have our mixture, like we had before, our DNA molecules. But this time we will have primers that bond to the open strand. Okay, now the primers bind to each end of their specific target sequences. So this shows a primer. I'm using the same colours as I did for the previous example in the previous video just to show you. So this involves cooling. And that is cooled to between 50 degrees to 65 degrees Celsius. And that allows primers to bind to their each end of their specific target sequence. Now, as with DNA replication, you need an enzyme, and that enzyme is DNA polymerase. So, on a diagram, as with DNA replication, um, previously, you'll see that the um, enzyme is often shown as a weak kidney bean shape. So if I include my primers here, as I had before, DNA polymerase would be added as a little kidney bean shape. Now the purpose of DNA polymerase is to add nucleotides onto a strand. Now in this case, DNA polymerase is what's called heat tolerant. So in this stage, we have to heat it again. But at this point, it's not as high as the original heating. So it is around 70 to 80 degrees Celsius. Now that brings the temperature to the DNA polymerase's optimum temperature. And that allows the DNA polymerase to add nucleotides to the primer and specifically to the three prime end of the primer. Okay, so as before, um, in the previous DNA replication video, you get your appropriate base on your nucleotide, so adenine or thymine cytosine or guanine, which are complementary base pair, and form a new strand which is complementary to the open strand. Okay, and it would do that then by forming a sugar phosphate backbone. 
all the way along. And it would do the same on this new strand on the other side, which is complementary to it. Okay, so DNA polymerase would work its way along, adding nucleotides to the three prime end of that primer. And this temperature is the optimum for DNA polymerase because it is heat tolerant. And normally human enzymes are in around about 37 degrees for their optimum temperature. For this one, because DNA polymerase is heat tolerant, that temperature needs to be higher. So ultimately then, once you have heated and separated the strands, you've cooled and the primers have binded, or bonded, sorry. And then the heating again allows that strand and two new strands to be replicated using DNA polymerase. So at the end of it, what you get is a final molecule of DNA on each side. So two new molecules of DNA. So the purpose of this is to amplify it many, many times. So once we have produced these two new molecules of DNA, this process is repeated. Okay, and once that process is repeated, it produces more and more and more DNA molecules. So with that then, in a similar way to cell division, if you begin with one molecule of DNA, you would produce two after one cycle. Then the next cycle, those two double and make four. The next cycle, they double and make eight. And every time you go through a cycle, you would duplicate that and double it, again, multiply it by two. So each time that you go through a cycle of repeated heating and cooling and heating again, you would then multiply the number of DNA molecules you have by two. Okay, now questions can sometimes ask you over time or it can ask you over cycle. So this would be one cycle. That cycle could be 20 minutes, it could be five minutes. So that would be dependent on the question. Okay, so comparing DNA replication to PCR, really the only true difference is that the temperatures are involved and that DNA polymerase is um, heat tolerant in this instead of just being normally a, a DNA polymerase enzyme. Okay. So that concludes all the PCR in video and it concludes the whole replication of DNA section.